John at IPT. A um, couple more Mitsubishi transmission tips for you guys. Most of these involve torque converter installation and, and uh, general transmission installation. All right, here's a couple torque converter tips. Um, first of all, on these Mitsubishis, you can see there's a flat surface here. This is what your lockup clutch rides against. So what happens is sometimes these bolts stretch out or people change the bolts and a bolt that's too long gets in there. And this isn't real thick. This is about 40 thousandths thick. Um, if you tighten up a bolt that's too long in there, it's going to put four dimples in, in this surface and it's going to rip the clutch apart like right away. So you always want to thread these bolts in by hand to make sure that they're not too long and they're not dimpling the surface. When you get a converter from us, we supply four new converter bolts with it, but if you're not getting it from us, and it, you know, or whatever, you just always want to check this. Well, the next thing you always want to do is, on the pilot, just hit it with a little sandpaper. Make sure it's not rusty or, or that there's, there's no paint on it or anything like that. And it also doesn't hurt to put a little anti-seize in there. Um, you know, you don't want this to bind up. You don't want to have trouble sticking the converter in. And also, there's nothing worse than, than a torque converter pilot getting stuck in the pilot bushing. It makes the trans very hard to take out if you ever have to take it back out. And another thing on these Mitsubishis, the uh, converter bolts love to come loose. So you really want to Loctite the hell out of them with... Um, red Loctite or, or something equivalent. You know, clean it off real good with brake clean, clean the bolts with brake clean and, and uh, put red Loctite on them and, and torque them to spec or, you know, get them pretty tight because they, they do like to come loose, especially when people do stuff like get, get rid of balance shafts and it just, you know, sets up more vibration and, and things like that. All right, the next thing is whenever you have a new converter, you want to put about a quart of trans fluid in it. And you, you have to do it little by little. It takes a long time to do. You know, it'll take you a good 10, 15 minutes. But what happens is when you turn the key, these uh, parts in the torque converter start spinning real fast. So to put it in dry, you're causing a lot of unnecessary wear as soon as you turn that key. Now you also want to lube up the hub with either petroleum jelly or, or transmission assembly grease. You don't want to use wheel bearing grease or anything like that on a transmission because it just you know doesn't dissolve and, and dirt will eventually stick to it and, and uh, you know might wear out the seal prematurely. All right, putting the torque converter in the same thing. Lube up your front seal. And you can also put a little bit on this pilot extension because that does sit in a bushing in the torque converter. Now putting this in, this is a very common mistake. This is probably the, the biggest cause of, of uh, failure when people put new converters in or, or a new trans. They don't have this converter in all the way. So it's got three sets of splines to engage. Sometimes it's a lot harder than that. But if you heard it, there was three distinct clunks when that got put in. to hold the, the trans up. And I'm going to take a measurement for you guys so you can kind of see the approximate distance between this bell housing surface and the converter pad and um, you know you'll know if you have it in so first I'm going to subtract the thickness of my straight edge and zero this out I'm going to lay a straight edge across here and I have 484,000, so it's it's just about a half inch from this surface to the converter pad if it's in correctly and, and, and pushed in all the way. And another thing, once you get this in the car, it is imperative that you have to be able to turn this torque converter a little bit without it binding against the flex plate. Because if you can't or there's resistance, that means you don't have the torque converter in all the way, and as soon as you start this thing up, you're going to take out this pump. And as I said in previous videos, they're about 400 bucks a copy. Not to mention, when a pump blows up, it also puts metal throughout the whole trans, and a lot of times you have to get that whole thing back apart and, and clean it out. And um, 
long story short, blowing up a pump, there's nothing good about it, and, and it's uh, going to cause you a lot of pain. So the easiest thing is to just try and get everything done right. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is limp mode. Um, Mitsubishi was somehow smart enough to make two connectors that are exactly the same going on the transmission. So what happens is it's real easy to plug these things in wrong. You have your main solenoid connector and you have your connector for the pulse generators. Now what happens if these things get inverted, you're going to have limp mode right off the bat. It's never going to try and shift. You're just going to you know, be stuck in, in, uh, in high gear all the time. So if that happens to you right after you put a trans in, you want to check. Um, or better yet, when you take these things apart, mark it in the car. Just put a little mark, uh, you know, yellow paint or whatever on, on one of the connectors so you can't plug them in wrong. On that same note, you have two pulse generators that plug into this transmission. Okay? One of them is green with a black tracer on the wire, and the other one is just plain green. Also, the green with the black tracer has this black tubing on it whereas the other one has clear tubing. If you invert these, it's going to try and make one shift, and then it's going to go into limp mode right away. So you always want to make sure the, the green with the black and the black tube goes to the top of the trans. Right? So it, it's definitely possible and happens all the time that people plug these in wrong. So always the black goes on top.